Well, um, why I got involved is because, first of all, it's a passion about the work uh, that held 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 directors do. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's more than just a job, number one. I was involved directly in the beginning of determining, working on the core competencies. Uh, you know, we, I did a session on a, a day in the uh, in life of a health director. And it really uh, it stuck to me in a sense that um, we do a lot in our communities. We have to be, um, you know, well-rounded in many, many of the competencies. You know, we have a... 10 core competencies that we really have to uh, adhere to probably more than the guy in mainstream has to adhere to in doing the same type of uh, job like in, the, in Montreal as we as we sit here so uh, the the program FNHMA uh, certification for me was very important it brings seriousness to what we're doing it validates our work um, and it also helps us planning uh, for succession meaning now uh, like I have a few of my workers here, uh, they're, at the, they're at the conference, they're taking the, the training, uh, intensive training. Uh, it's just uh, a, a way of assuring a good a succession uh, for qualified individuals to lead a team of, of good people. So it's just that assurance. Another fulfilling uh, position, uh, being part of the, the, the Board of Directors here at FNHMA, uh, first of all, uh, the cause, the root cause, building capacity in our First Nations communities, the importance of um, broadening our, our scope and mandate when we start to address the social determinants of health, taking a larger role uh, in, in the development of our communities. So, you know, it, being part of the board, you get to share a lot of great experience with a lot of great individuals who share the same passion, uh, this, the, uh, who are, are dedicated. So it's really uh, more enriching for me. I get, I get more out of this than what I could ever put in, so. Well, first of all, in regards to the training, um, we're lucky uh, in Quebec, the, uh, our local, uh, Health organization, along with Health Canada, has put forward some dollars for people to do the intensive training, and they embrace uh, capacity development. And I think uh, people are starting to understand the importance of capacity development within our communities. So it's it's like a it's a, it's a given. It's uh, it's not uh, it's money well invested. And uh, when you train, if you, know, you become a certified First Nation health manager. If you retire in 10 years from now or move on to another job within the community, you take that expertise with you and you're sharing it with the rest of your community. So this is so valuable and so portable in other departments of your community. Well, although uh, I've, I've, uh, I've done the, the PLAR uh, process, I've also uh, embarked in the, the intensive training kind of to validate a little bit uh, the hard work we put in in building the core competencies, being part of the course development and, and doing some testing and whatnot. So I've taken the training and what I've received in return, uh, some of the, the, the best example would be in the governance. How much governance uh, in our communities uh, fluctuates so widely and whereas it really has to be more of a, a standardized policy driven uh, you know something so that our, our members and our, our, our leaders uh, can 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 use more fluently so the 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 the, uh, the, the course on governance was probably the most uh, significant one up to this point well you know when you look at uh, you go out for a workshop or training, this and that, you, you, you acquire a certain amount of, of knowledge, but also you acquire, you make connections with other individuals, with other key stakeholders, and uh, those connections that uh, come up with best practices, those, those people, uh, you know, you share experience, so the networking is extremely important. In regards to the capacity building, one of the tricks I've learned over the years is I don't build alone. Okay, it's, what I mean by that is that I'm not the only one going out for this training. I have two other people from my community. So when we do come back, 
I'm not alone trying to move and change things. And I found that to be very important. So if communities can train more than one or two people within their communities in, in, our, in our courses, it'll make things a lot easier, better flow through. So when we put together proposals and, 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 and projects, it's a lot easier to get support. And uh, the funding agents uh, realize when they see the quality, it's tough to refuse. I think the main thing is, uh, you know, we don't know it all all the time. I've been doing this job for 14 years. I'm always learning. But also don't be afraid to share, share your knowledge. Don't be afraid to train the people below you. Get them, uh, get, give them all the, the, the training possible. Because when you come back from me, from good training, you like to implement things and it's a lot easier to do so when you have support. And people who, you know, understand uh, you know, change management is another important uh, part of the training uh, you'll receive and it's tough. We have uh, people in our communities who've been there for 30 years and probably still don't use a computer and never will. And how do you work with that? You know, so there's different strategies and, and tools you, you, you gain in our training. So I think uh, you, you got to keep, keep going, keep training. Uh, don't be afraid to, to try new things.